the water along intracoastal waterway in Delray Beach, Florida, a disturbing find. Someone passing by noticed a suitcase with a woman's body sticking out the sides. Officers and detectives responded and were able to corroborate that it was, in fact, human remains that were protruding from this particular suitcase. Two more 911 calls reported similar discoveries. All three suitcases were deemed to be the same person, the same victim as the original suitcase that was found. Investigators with the Delray Police Department fielded questions from reporters during a press conference. Were all, all the parts of her body found in the three suitcases or was anything missing? Uh, we have determined that all the parts that we have are of one victim, uh, but I won't answer specifics on which parts we have or which ones were found in which cases. This is quite gruesome. Certainly. Certainly. I would, I would agree with you. Of a woman's body found in three separate suitcases. It's, it's very gruesome. Now police are trying to figure out who this woman is and who killed her. They shared a photo of the floral shirt she was wearing with a few other clues. The brand of the top is unique and believed to be made by a Brazilian company. The victim is either Caucasian or Latin American, between 35 and 55 years old. She's about 5'4 with brown hair and may have tattooed eyebrows. She was put in the water between Monday, July 17th and Thursday, July 20th. So we're asking for the public to do some of that, that legwork for us and, and to please call in. A sudden burst of gunfire leaves a young woman dead tonight. Philadelphia police say she was shot and killed while sitting in a car here in Feltonville. The gunman opening fire from a passing SUV. Monday night and the big story on Action News is the latest in a shocking murder in the 500 block of Loudoun Street and a desperate search for a suspect. Action News reporter Katie Castro is live from Philadelphia Police Headquarters with more on the investigation and the victim. Katie. Rick, police are still looking for the shooter or shooters responsible for firing at least 28 shots and killing a 32-year-old woman. All of this while little kids were practicing football nearby. Several bullets went through the front windshield and she was struck in the face, the neck, and the chest. Just before 6 p.m., a barrage of bullets rang out on the 500 block of East Loudoun Street in Fentonville. Police say a 32-year-old woman was fatally shot. She was slumped in the driver's seat of a Honda sedan that was parked along the curb. Clearly, that vehicle was hit at least 15 times by gunfire. Police say the woman is the registered owner of the vehicle. She does not live in the neighborhood. Investigators aren't sure if the woman was the intended target, but say her vehicle was. Although someone was tragically shot and killed, we had at least 100 people at this playground right across the street. And with 28 shots fired, we're very lucky that there are no additional shooting victims. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakak Badash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Ruel. Peace and salutations to the elect, and much respect to the brothers pushing his word in the four winds of the earth. And shalom to you, few sincere sisters out there. This is Brother Ariyah coming at you with another lesson here. And uh, I got this, uh, this article here. It says, Angry husband ordered wife to line up in the kitchen before executing her while her son watched, okay? It says a, a Missouri man, angry and upset with the way his life was going, shot and killed his wife in front of her son, okay? It happened in Kansas City, right? It goes into his charges and all that, but the Heavenly Father is putting his spirit on men, you know, <laughs> you, know to, uh, you know, get at these women out here, man. And why, why we see all these women, you know, shaking their ass and, you know, just doing all this wicked shit, man. They don't understand um, the things that are coming on the earth, man. You know, they don't understand it. Neither do they care because they don't believe it's coming. Okay, but they, there's, a, there's a big uh, shift coming uh, real soon, man. And it's the, you know, Heavenly Father once again communicating with us. You know, through these judgments, man. You know, when you turn on the news now, you see women getting uh, taken out left and right, man. This is the most I've ever seen uh, women getting taken out 
damn near every day in my life in the 43 years I've been living, man. This is the first time in my life since I've been living that I've been seeing a lot of women uh, being murdered, man. You know, daily, day in, day out, man. Okay? You got the woman in, in the suitcase. You know, the dude, you know, probably, you know, did what he did with her. He cut her up, dismembered her, and, and fit her body into three suitcases, man. Okay? And threw it out into the ocean. You know, and the Heavenly Father wanted that to be found. You know? You got the woman just sitting in, the, in her, in her uh, 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 minivan. You know, she got shot up, shot all in the face and everything, man. You know, the Heavenly Father is not playing, and, and that's just the fury of the Lord, man. You know? Now, before I get into some scriptures here, um, won't let me. This is, uh, this movie right here, um, shows you, man, you know? This is a movie called The Poughkeepsie Tapes that was, uh, once banned in, in the United States when it first came out. You know, when you watch it, it's, it's, it looks like a, a documentary. And uh, some people per perceived it to be a, a real, real tapes. But it really goes into how this one dude just captures and, and tortures women, man. You know? And that just made me think, like, yo, there's so many dudes out there um, that's like this. That like to do these things to women, man. There are a lot of men out here that hate women, man. And seek to do nothing more than to uh, capture a woman and, and torture her, man, for his own enjoyment, man. There are a lot of sick men that get off on this, man. Okay, it also reminds me of a, there's a, a TV show on Showtime called Dexter, the fifth season, you know, where, you know, this group of dudes was uh, kidnapping and, and, and killing women, man, torturing them. And then stuffing their bodies in, in barrels, man, filled with formaldehyde, man. You know, to keep them to keep them intact, you know, so they can come back and visit them, man. I ain't gonna say no more than that. You know what I'm saying? But there's some real sick men out here, man. And these are the men that you evil women are going to have to uh deal with. These are the evil men that are going to confront you, man. Okay? When these evil days come. And you wicked women out here are not uh, even going to be prepared, man, you know, for what's coming, right? So let's get some scriptures, man. Yeah, that movie, uh, the Poughkeepsie Tapes, is uh, is crazy, man. I, I suggest, you know, you watch it, man, okay? I suggest you watch that, okay? And this is uh, Isaiah 13 and 6. Through 12, it says, How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed at one another, their faces shall be in flames. And this is talking about, of course, you know, when the missiles hit, right? But it says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it, right? And it says, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, and the sun shall be darkened, and his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible, and it says, this is my point, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Now, these women that pass us by you know, every day when we at camp laughing at us, you know, you hear a lot of snickers, man, when a lot of these women pass, you know what I'm saying? A lot of snickers, a lot of laughter, you know, a lot of them, you know, avoid contact. There's plenty of women that uh, don't even want to pass us. They cross the street, man, you know? A lot of women look at us like we're weirdos out there. You know what I'm saying? But in this day here, you know, men will be uh, precious, man. More precious than fine gold, man. You know? And uh, these women out here that, 
you know, uh, you know, be disrespectful and, you know, laughing, making jokes and smirks and all that bullshit. These are the same women that's going to be running after the men of the Lord, man, because they're going to be running from them, from them sickos I was talking about earlier, man. Okay. That great humbling process is coming for a lot of these women out here, man. You know, a lot of these women that be on some bullshit, and not all of them going to die. Some of them are going to get chosen, man. But the same way that the Heavenly Father is going to be refining us, you know, through the fire, you know, he's going to be refining a lot of these women through the fire too, man. You know, through the shit that they go through, the things that they see, the things that happen, that's going to be happening to them, man. You know? Let's get Isaiah 32. Let's go to Isaiah 32. Uh, let me get 9 through 11 real quick. And it says, rise up, ye women that are at ease. You know, a lot of these women are at ease, man. They're comfortable right now, man. And comfortability will kill you, man. You know, it's better to be uncomfortable than to be comfortable. But these women out here are at ease right now, man. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters, and give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. And it says, tremble, ye women that are at ease, be troubled. Ye careless ones strip you and make you bear and gird sackcloth upon your loins, man. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, man. And that's going to be that great humbling process that I was just talking about, man. That a lot of these women are going to go through, man. Okay? The Heavenly Father is going to put these women through experiences that is going to greatly humble them, man. I was just watching a, a video of a man and a woman getting married, and when the um, priest got to the part uh, for you know a woman to obey, she couldn't even say it. She couldn't even say that part. She actually asked him to skip past that part, man. And the husband, with his simp ass, was okay with it, you know. But there ain't gonna be none of that in this day, man. You know, the apostles always speak of how women are going to be lining up. Brothers is going to have to fight them off with a stick <laughs> because of all of them, them terrors and shit that they've been through and seen and may have even happened to them, man. See, these women are at ease right now. They think it's all good. You know, they don't think anything's going to pop off. Ain't nothing going to happen to them. Life is going to continue uh, the way it's been for them, you know, as far as as far as they can remember. Okay, but things are about to change, man. It's about to be a great shift on the earth, man. Okay, and most of these women are not going to be prepared for it, man. Let's get Micah 7 and 9. No, 7 and 10. And it says, Then she that is my enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy power? Right? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets, man. And that kind of that reminds me of Job's wife, man. You know, where is the Lord thy power? You know, where it says, uh, shame shall cover her, which said unto me, where is the Lord thy power? And my eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. There's going to be a lot of dead women out here, man. You know, and it's not, you know, something that, oh, I wish it because I hate women. No, I love women, man. You know, I just don't love the state. Uh, and the spirit that dwells in a lot of these women out here right now, man. That shit I don't love, you know? But because of it, the Heavenly Father is going to put a lot of women to death, man. Okay? A lot of women are going to get put to death, man. And like I said earlier, I've never uh, seen where women are getting executed and killed day in and day out, man. The Heavenly Father is doing a great work out here, man. And... Women are not paying attention to it because they too busy, you know, uh, pleasing their flesh and having fun, you know? Let's get second address. Uh, let's get second address of uh, 1537, man. And it says, uh, it says, and there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth, man. Right? When this day comes. You know, everyone's going to be scared to death, but the men of the Lord, everyone's going to be scared to death, man. So these, these men that these women are chasing after right now, okay, 
most of these men are going to be are going to crumble and they're going to fall before whatever's uh, facing them, whatever they're faced with. Okay, because they're not going to be backed by the Lord, man. Okay, so all that tough guy shit, all that uh, pretty boy shit, and you know all of these things that these women are attracted to. They're not going to find that attractive anymore, man, because the Heavenly Father is going to reveal a lot of these men out here, man. Okay, and he's going to reveal them to not be men, but to be boys, man. Okay, to be cowards. And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth, and they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them, right? Now, Apostle Gabal always goes into what? Women love men in the position of power, man, right? And I believe in this time right here, right, when there's great trembling upon the earth, right? That's when Isaiah 4 and 1 going to pop off, man. This is when the women are going to be flocking to the men of the Lord, man. Okay? Women are going to be flocking to the men of the Lord, man. Okay? Because they're going to see that these men that they sought after are not really what's going to protect them. They're going to see that, you know, these men that they've been, uh, you know, chasing aren't worth the chase, man. And it says, uh, Isaiah 32 and 2, and it says, a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, right? Talking about the men of the Lord. These women are going to see that, you know, nothing is touching these men. Nothing is hurting these men. You know, these men are eating, man. Okay? These beasts, these newly created beasts I ain't never seen before are out here ripping people to shreds, man. There's blood everywhere on the streets, body parts everywhere on the streets. But these men are good. These men are not being touched. Oh, we got to go. We got to go see these men right here, man. You know? And it says in, in a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, man. Yeah, man. So now on this side, man, it's not even nothing to, you know, worry about trying to get, you know, some box and all that. I mean, if you got a wife, you know, you good, but it ain't. It ain't really the time to be trying to chase these women right now, man. Because trust and believe, you know, when these days pop off, man, these evil days come, these women are going to come a-knocking, man. Various brothers have had visions and dreams about this time, man. And we talk about this time all the time, you know. And we know and we believe that it's coming. And it is going to come, man. You know, I say that with confidence. It is going to come. You know, so it ain't nothing. Don't be stressing these women out here, man. You know, because you the prize at the end of the day. Talking about men. We the prize. And women are going to see that in that day. Right? Let's get Job 5, 19 through 22. And it says, He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. And thou shalt be hid from the scores of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Now a lot of these people that see us, or Lord willing, I'm, I'm of that number, that see the men of the Lord, you know, doing this, are going to be looking at them with bewilderment, Right? With their mouth open, with their eyes wide open, like, wow, these, these dudes, I'm scared to death over here, man. You know, I got two pounds of shit in my pants, and this dude is over here laughing. He's laughing at, you know, these lions, you know, eating this woman up, you know, with her baby in her hands. And these dudes is over here laughing. What is going on? Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth, right? These same beasts that's going to be out here you know, getting busy, right? Ain't going to touch the men of the Lord, man. The beasts of the earth are going to be in league with the men of the Lord, man. Okay? Meaning what? You can see a, a you know, a, a cheetah or a, a black panther or a grizzly bear. And a man of the Lord can go up and jump on it <laughs> and ride it or pat it on the head, man. Nothing is going to happen to him. Let a woman see something like that in the days that are coming on the earth, man. I guarantee you she going to be chasing that, man. Okay? Because women respect power, man. And in that day, the men of the Lord are going to have that power, man. 
through the spirit and power of the heavenly father, man. And it says, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee, man. But they're going to be ripping everyone else up, man. Let's get Psalms 91. One of my favorite chapters. Let's get Psalms 91. We're going to read one through seven. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Okay, talking about the missiles. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Okay? And that's what these women, during this time, these women are going to be looking for protection, man. And you're only going to get protection from uh, a man of the Lord, man. These men... You know, that you see out on the streets every day with garments on. Um, not every day, you know, every week, right? Or every day of the week with garments on, man. You know, preaching the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You know? These are the men that that are, 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 are to be respected, man. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of you women that's out here doing you know, wickedness, man, and being wicked and doing wickedly, you know, this is something that you might have to face, man. The Heavenly Father is going to put you through a lot of things, man. You know? And ultimately, if he chooses for you to be put to death, man, it's going to be a harsh one, man. But you're going to have to go through a whole lot of harshness before that, that, that uh, you know, ultimately you are put to death. You know? And, and a lot of these women out here are not considering that, man. But I, I'm, that's what I'm seeing. Every time I look on the news and see, you know, another woman uh, put to death, that's what I'm thinking about, man. You know, the Heavenly Father is going to make a lot of these women suffer, man. He's going to make a lot, of you, a lot of you women out here suffer, man. Let's get Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. And it says, therefore, thus saith the Lord power, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Right. And this is another thing that's going to draw on a lot of women because women greedy as hell. You can ask a woman, hey, you want something to eat? No, nah, I'm good. And you come back with something to eat. Oh, that smell good. Can I have some indecisive and a pain in the ass at the same time and greedy? So women see men, there ain't no food around, right? People are dying from hunger and, and thirst. And, and women roll upon men that got food and drink. You know women going to be like, oh, it's lit over here. I'm trying to get with them. And you better pray that you got a right spirit in you because it's going to hurt your feelings if you get rejected in that day, man. And then you can't have nothing to eat. You can't have nothing to drink. The Heavenly Father is going to give the, 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 the men of the Lord discernment to know if you was talking shit about the men of the Lord. Because it ain't you talking shit about us. It's you talking shit about the Heavenly Father, man. So it's going to be the Heavenly Father that's going to reject you, man. For the things that came out of your mouth. The things you did. Behold, my servant shall rejoice. But ye shall be ashamed. And of course, this is going into, uh, you know, the men that turn their back on the plow. You know, behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit, man. So these men, you know, the men of the Lord are going to be rejoicing, man. Why? Because the Heavenly Father got their back, man. You know? That's why, that's why, that's why the men of the Lord are going to be rejoicing in that day, man. And this is why women are going to seek to cling on to the men of the Lord, man, for that protection. 
so they could survive. Because women are going to be scared to death in that day, man. Okay? Once again, that great humbling process, man. Let's get my last one right here, man. Let's get 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. And it says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is the anointed, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of the anointed, Yahweh Shai, is his father, Yahweh. Okay? And everything in that day, when women go through that great uh, humbling process, right? Things are going to be set back in its natural order, man. Okay? And women are going to uh, respect and accept the fact that the man is ahead of them, man. It ain't going to be no arguments. It ain't going to be no talking back. It ain't going to be none of that mouthiness or none of that, man. Okay? It's just going to be straight up compliance. Okay? Ain't going to be none of that because the woman's going to know Without this man by my side, I'm going to die, man. Without this man by my side, I'm going to perish. Something bad going to happen to me. So I better respect this man. I better do what this man asks me to do. I better do what this man expects me to do. Because if he cuts me off from his flesh, I'm done. Shalom.